I wonder what kinds of predictions you made at the beginning of the lesson. Would you raise your hand if you predicted that A would win? Hands up straight. Okay, I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people. And so hand up now if you predicted B would win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, interesting. Now, if you have a look, it seems quite evenly split, doesn't it? It's pretty close. How many A's have won? Seven. Seven. Looks like seven, and how many B's? Six. Six. It's very close, isn't it? Okay, now, I'm very interested in two things. Number one, I want to understand why this happened. And number two, remember I asked you to pick A and B at the beginning of the game before you knew any of the rules about how this works, right? But in reality, usually you know a little bit about how something works and you get to choose, right? So in future, what mathematics is going to help you actually work out, okay, my chances are better here or there. We were quite split and our instincts are sort of not borne out well. So why is that, okay? Now, underneath where you were working this morning, right, we introduced all these different ideas. The most recent idea we introduced was, do you remember what was the last bit of language that I gave you? Do you remember what it was? Sample space, good. Now right under that, I want you to write down probability. And this time, we're not just think, going to think about the general concept. We're going to introduce some like hard concepts here that are going to actually help you understand this idea here. Okay? In fact, I'm going to give you a formula for that, right? So if you want to work out the probability of an event, there's lots of ways to describe it. You can just use words like more likely, less likely, guaranteed, definitely not. But we want to be a little numerical about this, a little more precise. So we're going to write a big long <coughs> fraction and I'm going to explain it as we go. Okay? On the numerator of the fraction, the way to work out probability is, and I'll explain this after we've written it, the number of favorable, I'll explain that, outcomes. Now, just think back to the morning. What's an outcome again? Like, not just the general word, but in probability, what's our definition for outcome? Nikhil. How many different, like, um, things can, like, it can end up with? It's very, very close. That's connected to this idea of sample space that we were looking at earlier. Brad, do you want to augment it a little bit? Yeah, it's like, what happens at the end? You do the experiment, what's the result? What will happen? What event will take place at the end? That's the outcome, okay? Now, when I say favorable, maybe you want to draw an arrow to that. And what we mean by favorable is the ones that you're interested in, right? What you're interested in. So for example, for player A, what outcome were they interested in? What were they interested in rolling? A six, right? A six. For player A, their favorable outcome was a six. Right? Okay, good. Now, that's the numerator of the fraction. What's on the bottom? It's also a number, but it's not the number of favorable outcomes. It's the number of possible outcomes. Now, we already have a name for this. We just mentioned it like one minute ago. What do we call this again? Space. This is the sample space, okay? So this part down the bottom here, is the size of the sample space. Okay? Now, let's use this idea to unpack this game and see what's going on. Okay? The probability, and just to abbreviate this a little bit, we'll just write the letter P because you're going to get sick of writing the word probability over and over again. The probability of rolling a 6 on a die. Okay? What is the chance of rolling a 6 on a die? Now think about it through the lens of this, right? This is player A, right, who wants the six. How many of the sides on the die are sixes? One. It's just the one, right? So the number of favorable outcomes one is just six. one. Now, what's the sample space? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So the size of the sample space is six. six. So this is the probability of rolling a six, right? It's one out of six, a sixth. Uh, I could write that as a percentage. What is one-sixth as a percentage? Does anyone know? Yes. It's about, I can actually say it exactly, it's 16.6 .6 repeater percent. Okay? 
okay? That's so saying. just like if you recall <laughs> from fractions, decimals, and percentages, you can write it as a fraction, you can write it as a percentage, you can write it as a decimal, 0 0.16666666. It's all the same number, okay? Flesh. All right, now that was player A, right? What was the favorable outcome that player B was looking for? Christian? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. So I could write this in a couple of different ways. I could say one, two, three, four, five, right? That's the favorable outcome for player B. I could also just say not a six. Like I just, anything but a six, right? So I can say not six. These are the same thing, right? Now, again, I'm gonna ask the question, how many uh, outcomes are not six on the faces of the die? Four. Five. I mean five. Five. There they are. One, two, three, four, and five. Five. What about the size of the sample space? Six. It's still six. It hasn't changed, right? Okay. So five sixths. Yeah, so five sixths is the chance on any given roll that player B is going to actually make a get, get points on that. Okay. All right, now consider. Let's have a look um, at these games here. Now, they're all of varying lengths, as you can see. Okay? I'm interested in working out what are the chances, what are the odds. Okay? So let's just imagine a, you know, a fictitious game of, say, or let's see. Let's go, no, 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 one of these games. But let's say you go for, I don't know, 60 rolls. Let's go for 60 rolls. Okay? That's quite a few rolls. Yep. Okay, well, let's find out. Let's actually all crunch the numbers together. So imagine a game where you roll exactly 60 times. If the probability of getting a 6 is 1 in every 6, then how many 6s should you expect to get? How many would you expect? 10. Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> yes, Nikhil. 10. 10. Very good. Okay. So I expect, I predict to roll 10 sixes, right? 10 sixes. So how many s points will player A score in this game, Frank? 140. Okay, very good. A will get 140 points, okay? But hold on a second. If A's got 10 sixes, that means every single other roll was a not six. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So how many is that? I expect to roll 50. 50 other numbers. Right? This is just on a expectation. This is just my prediction, right? So how many points does that mean for B? Have a look. Crunch the number. 150. Okay, thank you. 150. Now, I will just point out, a lot of you made this really hard for yourselves, hands down, because you were... Um, you were tallying as you went, so whenever player A won, you did this, you're like, ah, 14 points! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yay! And it took you a very long time and you may have miscounted. It may have been just quicker for player A to say, I won once, and then twice, and then three times, and then multiply, multiply, by, 14. multiply by 14, just like we did here. Okay. Now have a look. This is just like a pretend game. Who won? Who won? A. A. B. B won, right? In this pretend game. Okay. Now, as you can see, player A isn't always going to roll exactly 10 sixes. What would have happened if they'd rolled 11? What would they have scored instead of 140? Yeah. 154. Right? But if they roll one extra six, then these guys are going to roll one less of the other numbers, right? So how many other numbers will they roll? Not 50. It'll be 49, which means how many points are they going to score? 147. Yeah, three less than that, right? 147. Good work. So you can see, if just one roll goes the other way, then the table's set. And that's what accounts for this. Do you see this, right? This is actually a remarkably close to fair game. That's why it's almost 50-50. You can see one roll one way or the other makes the game a different winner. Does that make sense? Which is what you want out of a good game. You don't want the same person to win every single time. That's a bit boring. Okay, question. What if you got ridiculously unlucky? <laughs> okay, now luck, luck. Yeah, like me. Luck always does no, kind of come into it. However, here's the interesting thing, right? Uh, let's have a look. 
Who is the worst the worst loser out of the bees? 99 156. Is it? Okay. Well, you could argue that that's a really sad loss there, but we expected A to lose. We expected A to lose, right? Uh, I think the most stark one might be... This is pretty bad, right? That's a pretty bad loss. Like, this one's close. This one's reasonably close. Uh, who is this? Who is this last one? Oh, Marley. Yeah, it's not, it's not Marley's fault. In fact, if you roll enough times, you should expect that sometimes A will win, okay? As indeed happened, okay? 